Qualcomm just launched the Snapdragon 8 Elite here at Snapdragon Summit in Maui. During its presentation, Qualcomm made a whole bunch of benchmark claims, which I made a whole other video about, which I'll put a link up top for and as well as in the description. But Qualcomm also made some claims about what kind of features we might be able to expect from the Snapdragon 8 Elite, and it showed off demos to us of those features. Some of these features worked pretty well, and some of them didn't work so well at all. And I wanna show you what we saw so that you can make a judgment for yourself. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to run through the demos that we saw in order from the ones that worked the best to the ones that didn't work so well at all. And right up top, we have a gaming upscaling feature. This uses AI to render a game that's running natively at 1080p to look like it's running in 4K. Now, Qualcomm has done this in the past, but this is running even better than ever before. And for my eyes, it looked amazing. I noticed that the lighting on all of the rocks and especially on the back of the player character looked really, really crisp. And it didn't look at all like 1080p to me. So I really enjoyed this and I thought it was a big success for a demo. Another gaming related feature that we saw that looked really, really good was a demo of making an AI powered teammate in Naraka Blade Point Mobile. So Naraka has a feature where you have a team of AI compatriots with your player character. But to control those characters, you have to use, you know, touch input like you would control any other thing. But thanks to AI, you are able to control those characters using voice commands. And you can also train those characters to help you in battle when things go awry. For example, if your character goes down, you can have that AI teammate come and revive you automatically without having to tell it to do so. This could make your gaming experience a lot better in this particular title. Okay, so we had a lot of success with the gaming demos, but we started to see things go awry when we went into the photography demos. And one thing we looked at was AI segmentation. AI segmentation takes the different layers that you see in a photograph and parses them all out so that you can manipulate them. So for example, if you take a photo and there's a chair in it, then the chair gets segmented out. And then the lamp would get segmented out as well. And then you'd have this entire image with all sorts of segmentation around it. So the AI actually picks up on all these items and then would allow you to move these items or remove them or you know, change the color or, or whatever you might imagine. So you can get creative with that photo. The AI segmentation worked great in the demo, but unfortunately we couldn't actually do anything with the image once it was all segmented out. This was kind of weird because it would have been really nice to be able to delete this thing or change the color of this thing, but it just didn't work. So it looks like it's off to a great start, but it needs a little bit more to execute fully. Another photography demo we saw was for taking photos of your pets. Pets are known to move very fast and are very difficult to photograph. And so what this AI team within Qualcomm has done is create a algorithm that can figure out what the best photo is for your pet when you take that shot, and then also augment that photo to make it even more crisp and even more in focus, especially when you take a photo with your pet moving very quickly. This worked fairly well. It was really good at picking out the photo that looked the best from the 30 photos it took when you pushed the shutter button. But then they tried to show us this AI augmentation feature that supposedly makes the picture look crisper and makes the pet's fur look more realistic. Unfortunately, it just didn't really work. The pet's fur looked just as smushy as it would before, and it didn't look any crisper or better. It just looked like it was, I don't know, processed a little bit more. So this one also starts off strong, but needs a little bit more work before it's gonna be fully baked. Qualcomm also shot off a new feature called Magic Keeper. This will sound familiar for people who have used Magic Eraser in the past. What it does is it looks at a photograph and figures out who is the subject of that photograph, usually the person in the middle or the person that is most close to the camera. The rest of the people in that photograph, it automatically figures out are not part of that photograph and takes them out and then focuses just on that one person, hence Magic Keeper, keeping the person in focus. This worked okay. It was able to find the subject really well and remove most of the people from the background, but it needed to use generative fill to fill in the blank spots where it took out those people, and the generative fill just did not look good at all. This feature also took a long time for us to figure out how to use, and for something like this, it needs to be simple and intuitive, and it just wasn't. 
Clearly, we need Google to come in and figure out how to do this the right way. During the keynote, Qualcomm spent a bit of time talking about Video Object Eraser, which does pretty much what it sounds like it does. It allows you to shoot 4K video at 60 frames per second and remove things from those videos. We tried this out on some trees that were in the background of this shot, but unfortunately, it took the trees out just fine, but what it left behind didn't look good at all. It made the sky look like it was just a big, mushy, cloudy mess. So the idea is sound, shooting a high quality video and being able to take objects out of it, but right now it is not ready for prime time. I would say this one is probably at least a year, possibly even two years out from being at all usable for a real video. Finally, the last demo we saw that really just didn't work well at all was the new way of changing the lighting in real time for a selfie video. What Qualcomm is envisioning here is, is that you are doing a live video of some kind, whether that's a Zoom call or maybe a YouTube live video, and the lighting conditions aren't great. So using AI, you could natively change the lighting that the camera is capturing, allowing you to have a lighting rig without actually having a lighting rig. This is a terrific idea because it would make all those things that people are doing with Zoom calls and live videos look even better. But in execution, it looked awful. It was flashy, it didn't look natural at all, and it didn't stick. My face was just blinking. It, it looked really, really bad. And so clearly, once again, Qualcomm has a terrific idea here. This is something that could be really useful for people, but it is way beyond where it actually is today. It's going to be years and years and years before something like this could actually be used on a professional Zoom call or a professional live stream. I don't want this to seem like I'm, you know, making it fun of Qualcomm or saying that Qualcomm shouldn't be doing these kinds of things. I am really excited about all these demos that we saw. And I think that Qualcomm has some terrific ideas. And the idea that we're going to be able to do these things on device without needing to send out information into the cloud is incredibly exciting. The problem is, is that what Qualcomm is saying on the keynote stage and what it's showing to us on the demos are not one and the same. Qualcomm has a long ways to go before these things are going to be ready for prime time. Granted, Qualcomm isn't going to be making a lot of these features. Google, for example, would probably do something like the video object eraser feature. So that's going to be something that Google's going to have to make work. And Qualcomm is really only showing these as a proof of concept. But if you saw today's keynote and thought to yourself, hmm, I can't wait to get the Snapdragon 8 Elite so I can do these things, unfortunately, those things are not going to be a part of your Snapdragon 8 Elite phone, at least not yet. So jump down in the comments and let me know what you thought about these demos, how they look to you, and whether or not you're excited about any of them. And in the meantime, I will see you in the next video.